بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'd like to welcome you for continuation of translation to some of the questions of Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani, rahmatullahi alayhi, that been addressed to him. And we're continuing with step number seven, question number seven from Fatawa Rabir. Concerning the obligation of Muslims to take the knowledge from its people, and the meaning of the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ سورة النحل verse number 43 and the necessity of not to be deceiving be deceived by everybody who wrote a booklet the Shaykh Rahmatullah Ali is saying uh, today we see some people who are here and there in the Muslim world. Maybe we can claim, we can call them Murshidun or that they guide people. <coughs> And they also carry the obligation of sifting the Islam from any foreigner elements that been attached to it. Clearing the Islam from all kind of innovation concerning aqidah or fiqh or behavior. Nevertheless that most of them did not get the opportunity to carry the duty of tarbiya and discipline and nourishment even to a little group of Muslims to discipline according to the Islamic behavior and Islamic manner. A part of this manner that they need to adopt that every Muslim need to know himself, his value and to estimate himself in the proper way. It is very important to not to be deceived <coughs> by some people who claim in knowledge. We see this a lot now among the students of knowledge, future generation. generation. You see one of them, as soon he feels that he ha adopted some knowledge that he will rush to put together a booklet. <coughs> In reality, this booklet has not too much in it. From the knowledge that he obtained, studying or by hearing. In actuality, he tried to show off and to be known among the people that he's an author and he can write. He will bring few books or maybe four, put them in front of them, and after this he will carry a quotation from this book and quotation from the other book. And after this he will call this booklet being authenticated by so and so. Although that he himself doesn't know too much about Islam yet, especially this Islam that we always been talking about is the pure Islam. In the meantime, this person who write maybe small booklet or risala, he didn't find anybody to discipline according to the Islamic behavior. Neither he himself try to apply this behavior to himself according to what they came in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi I adjure my brothers who are just coming on this path of knowledge, seeking the knowledge of book of Allah and the Sunnah to understand from where to take the knowledge. 
Here some of the Nusus statements of the Sharia. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. This is Surah Al-Nahl verse number 43. This statement of Allah is addressed the whole Ummah. So according to this verse, Allah made the Ummah, the nation of the believers, two parts or two categories. The first category, they don't know. And the second category, they know. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made obligation upon both parties. Which is not other party obligated to. The first who don't know, Allah obligates them to ask those who know. And this is the majority of the Ummah. And the Dalil on this that Allah is saying, وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most of the people doesn't know better. And this is the majority of the Ummah. Allah obligated them to ask. Ask the other party, which are few, and those are the scholars. And the scholars are those people who have been carrying the proper knowledge of the Sharia. And as a result of having the proper knowledge, they will have the fear of Allah Almighty. As for the knowledge that will put the fear on the heart of those people and make them among the khashi'in, those who are fearful of Allah, is the knowledge of the Book of Allah and the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah Wasallam, according to the understanding of the early companions, the Sahaba, the Tabi'een and the Tabi'i Tabi'een. Those people, Allah obligated them that when somebody asks them from the first category to answer them, same way that Allah obligated the first to ask. So now, when some people start to seek knowledge, that they have to be part of these two categories. That means they don't know or they know. And those who don't know are the majority. And those who know are the minor, minority. So Allah had obligated them in Surah Al-Nahl verse number 43 to ask the people of knowledge. And in answering to question number eight, the Shaykh Rahmatullah Alayhi Alayhi is saying to those people who had filled the libraries with booklets and books, which is they are not qualified to write or to teach. Neither they have any impact on their local community or the Ummah in general. The whole thing, that idea, some thoughts came to this person and after this he went and got some books and copied from here and there and after this they printed and distributed to the people. All that he took something that been written by somebody else and he made few comments on it and after this he put his name on the book and, and write being authenticated by so and so so those people who do this they are forcing themselves to be among the scholars and they are not 
As a result of this, we advise the new generation to take it easy and slow down. Not to try to join the ranks of the scholars and the people who have been searching all their life and examining the hadith because this new generation is still on the beginning of the road. In the beginning of their journey, they do not have enough experience. I saw a book which in its introduction the author or the person who wrote it is saying this a collection of a hadith been collected from al jami al sahir for Imam, Imam al suyuti and also from the hadith of Al al Bayt. <coughs> Kitab al suyuti is a book of al suyuti al jami al sahir most of you know have a lot of a hadith which is fabricated and other hadith which are weak. So what did this person do actually? He took the book, a jami al sahir and he collected about 300 hadith and after this add another 50 hadith which he claimed to be from the Ahadith of Al Bayt, which has some fabricated Ahadith and weak Ahadith, but he did this because he wanted to appear in front of the people as an author of a book. A Jami al Sahir book has 7,000 Hadith, which are authentic, and the rest is a weak. So you can imagine if everybody have an idea and he will go and bring the book al Jami al sahir and we'll make a small booklet with 300 hadith or even he maybe put 1000 hadith in it So by this we will see everybody writing something like this is nothing except a reputation for the hadith that in a book, the book al Jami al sahir How did he serve the knowledge by doing this? And is this person had really contributed anything? Is he part of those people who have the knowledge? Of course not. Again, it is the problem of trying to show off, which most of the new generation start involved in. They been deceived, and in reality, they are a distant, far away. Look to as example the Egyptian Sheikh by name Al-Ghazali which he claims since what she doesn't know as a result of this he went and weakened a hadith which are in Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim that because it contradicts with his ideas and his, his philosophy. And of course his education is not Islamic education, but it is a foreigner and a strange information. Again, we go about the necessity of tasfiyah and terbiyah. We still in the beginning of our journey towards Tasfiyah, i.e. freeing the religion from all kind of foreigner elements and foreigner information. 
We did not even enter the second part of the journey, which is the terbiya and the discipline and the cultivation. So we need to watch for ourselves and watch our steps and we really struggle hard against ourselves and to discipline ourselves according to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and to stay away from our desires and loving ourselves the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa stated al-mujahidu man jahada hawa fi Allah the true fighter and the true mujahid is the person who fight against his own desires in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thank you for watching may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us all from what we heard subhanakallahum wa bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka natubu ilaik and Allah knows